All right, so we're going to go over transformations and orientations in this one. Uh, the default cube, most of us are aware when we use the move tool here. This is what we're using. This is a global orientation, okay? Transform orientation. Uh, however, if you were to rotate this thing, press N, you can bring this out. Uh, when you rotate it, you can see you get rotational data. And if we actually switch this to local, we can use local orientation. And that moves with your object, basically, as long as it's got rotational values. So if you press Control A and apply rotation, you'll actually lose that. And it goes back to what looks like global. But um, Control Z, we can go back real quick. Okay, there's another one called normal here. Let's go into edit mode, hit the tab key or control tab. And when we do that, we get under this drop down additional options. All this pretty much down here is new. But here and here, these two. These are your vertex and face normals, okay? And you can actually move along these things as well, which is nice. Most of us are aware of this when we extrude things, but uh, there's another one that's your split normals. These control your shading. I made videos talking about this before. I'll probably do some more later in the future. Uh, but for now, we'll focus on these vertex and face normals. So when you extrude an edge, no, ever notice that little line that pops up? That's the normal of the face, usually speaking. You can also grab something like a vertex, though, and switch to normal here. So when we use the move tool, you'll see we can move it along the normal, right? Pretty simple. You can use face or normal. So if you bevel a edge, control B, there you go. All right, don't forget, I'm switching between vertex, edge, and face through my videos. That's usually what's happening. I'm using one, two, and three for that. So each time you switch these, a lot of times the way Blender behaves changes a little bit. So if anything ever looks confusing, try using a different selection method of vertex edge and face, right? Uh, all right, with that out of the way, those are pretty easy to understand. These other ones, uh, I don't really use them a whole lot. Some of them might be useful for like animation and stuff like that, but uh, you'll have to play around with those or look into those ones further. For this video, we're going to skip them. But the thing is, is that there's also um, different pivot points you can use, basically, right? Transform pivot points. So what we're using by default is medium points. So when we grab a group, so we hit shift, select a group, you'll see that it goes to the medium point of these areas. That's usually what's occurring. So if we select these three vertices, you'll see it goes to like this little weird orientation area here. And, um, but we can also use what's called active elements. So active elements, if I was to grab, say, all of these, you notice how it keeps changing as I select. Whatever is highlighted is your active element. So if you shift click, double click, you can change it to whatever you want. All right. And so when you go to rotate something, you can move off of that element. All right. So active elements is real good. Medium points is the default. There's also individual origins, which we'll go over here in a second. But there's also the 3D cursor. So 3D cursor is pretty self-explanatory. It goes to wherever the 3D cursor is. If you shift right click, you can place a 3D cursor somewhere. You can also... Um, say grab a, something like a vertex and then do like shift s cursor to selection and then you can place it wherever it needs to go uh, machine tools add-on is free by the way but it adopts the rotational value of the vertex so it creates the normal on it it lines up to the normal basically is what it's doing unless you hold down alt while clicking to whatever you're going to click so that's how that works you can see alt only the lo cursor location not the rotation or control only rotation so with that out of the way, you'll get a little bit behavior difference from Vanilla Blender to using machine tools because of stuff like that. So, all right, let's go ahead and talk about individual origins real quick. We're going to go back to default global median real quick. We're going to reset it, press Shift A, oh, Shift S, cursor to the world origin. Okay, goes back to the center. We're going to create a... Um, an icosphere. So shift A, create icosphere. These are really cool to play with when you're just wanting to learn about selections and um, modifying mesh and all that because we can go into edit mode here. And if you take a look here, these are e poles. All right? E poles are basically a single vertex with five or more edges that come out of it. Um, and so there's all kinds of different little e poles in here. We can play around with this because they're surrounded by different amounts of faces, basically. It's, it's kind of interesting how this works. But Selection methods, I use a lot. Just going to re recap on this, re-mention it. I use selection methods like more, less, loops, rings, loops. All this is on my mouse for the most part. So whenever you're watching my videos, it's all about selection for me. 
Like if I can get the selection I need, I can just move on a lot faster. And so one of them happens to be like loops boundary loop I use a lot. So if I selected all this and then I do loops boundary loop, bam, that's it. I got all that stuff on the outside there, right? Pretty useful. And so um, there's a menu though. Select uh, similar, shift G, okay? Now watch this. If I select this single vertex and I hit shift G, this is the shift G menu as it is right now, okay? If I had faces selected and I hit shift G, it's actually bigger and it has more options on it. So these this menu changes depending on if you're using vertex or face. So just want to point that out, right? Because if I can select the single vertex, hit shift G and select by amount of adjacent faces, we'll get a selection like this, right? But that's just for that one. However, there's this one too. We can press shift G and select amount of adjacent faces. So we could do something like that. Okay, so now I can hit control B and then hit V after hitting control B, right? I can bubble a single vertex and do a number like this. But this is where it gets fun because now we can select by face. We can do shift G and select by area. So we can select all these by area. Okay. We hit Alt S. We can scale along normals. All right. So don't forget Alt S. It's quite good. Do things like that. All right. And um, you can play around with all these, but let's say we wanted to rotate all of these. And you can see we're using global right now. That's not really the behavior we want. So instead, we can actually use the normal. And you'll notice it lines up to the normal of the face. So R and Z. We're used to, like, we can now spin it, basically. Cool. We can also do the other ones if we wanted to. But the, um, the thing is, maybe we want to do all of these at the same time. So I hit Shift G, select by area. And I just press R, Z. And we get this going on, right? Kind of cool, but not what we want. Uh, instead, we switch the pivot point to individual origins. We hit RZ again. Now look at it, right? You can hit even things like Shift X or Shift Y or Shift Z. It gets crazy, right? But we can hit RZ, and now we can spin all of them individually. Okay. We can do things like that if we wanted to. Now we can do this with individual objects as well. So we create a cube. In this cube, I'm going to hit Shift D or Shift D and X, and then hit Shift R so we can create a couple copies. So we want to modify all of these. We can use global or local or whatever in individual origins. Uh, R X, you can spin them all like that. R Y, R Z. Pretty simple, right? So that's an object mode doing that. So you might want to do it in object mode as well. Where it's going to get most complicated is when I talk about that active element again. So we're doing a global active element. We're going to snap. Um, snap you can turn on or you can hold control to activate it. So we're going to snap incrementally and we're going to do absolute grid snapping here in a second. So if you don't have grid snapping on, I want to prove a point here. Hitting Alt Z, by the way, turning this on and off, right? And uh, holding Alt while orbiting to jump to the side. It's just a reminder there. That that's what I'm doing. So um, this is lined up like so. Basically, it's medium points pretty close to the center here, the origin points down there. Uh, but if I take this off something like that, right? And I snap incrementally. I press G and Z and hold Control. Uh, maybe zoom out a little bit. You'll see that it snaps an even amount through the grid, but it doesn't snap to the grid, right? If we turn on absolute grid snap and we start moving this, it snaps the origin point to the grid. But maybe we want like, say, um, this edge to line up to the grid, but we don't want to change the size here. So we go into edit mode, we grab it, and we try to snap that edge to the grid. We can't, right? And the origin point's going to stay the same anyways, but uh, we can use an active element to make things like this happen. So I could select this top edge here, press G, Z, hold control, and now I could snap that to the grid. Okay, so that could be quite useful in some situations. Whenever you're doing groups of objects, you might want to actually make that happen and occur. Um, because if you have like an odd number or something like that, for example, uh, let's say we had, let's turn the grid on for this one. We're doing absolute grid snap. It's on the grid. Uh, but let's say we had three of, well, maybe not three, maybe um, an off number of something like this. Let's say we had something like this, right? And we're using global medium point. That's where it's going to snap. 
to the grid. Well, it should be anyways. It's not doing it. Hmm. Make sure we use a medium point, not active element. Okay. A lot of times in that situation, like maybe they weren't on the grid and we started snapping around. You see, even though we're using absolute grid snap, maybe, it still stays off the grid, basically. Yeah, sometimes it might even be on it, but sometimes it might not. Uh, in this case, it's not anymore. So when you have groups of objects, this origin or this medium point, this pivot point, is on the grid, but the objects are no longer on the grid. That's a problem, right? So you switch over to active element, and you define which one you want to control that snaps to the grid, and then subsequently you can make all of them snap to the grid where you want them. And anytime you do groups, you probably want to use active element, basically. Okay. And uh, so... That's, I think, something that confused a lot of people. It, it pops up kind of randomly. Like, you'll, you won't be thinking about it, but just remember, like, the, the basic rule there is groups of objects, usually you want to snap with active element, okay? Or groups of selections, like vertices and edges and stuff. Um, all right, with that out of the way, one more thing I want to talk about, which is snapping vertices. So, vertices... We're aware of active element here, and we're aware of global and medium and all that, right? Um, but active is useful for grid snapping, perhaps. But vertex, it's actually over here. For some reason, they have it as part of the vertex snap. Um, so the way this works out, let's see if we can't induce this behavior real quick. Let's say we have some shape like this, and let's do a little bit of... Um, Fusion out this way, this way. Okay, so let's say we want to snap this whole face back over to here using vertex snap. And we're going to use, I think it was set to medium by default or something like that anyways. But uh, if you were to just hit that and hit G and hold control, you'll see you get weird results sometimes like this, right? So in this case, that would be the medium point. Or if we use, no, it's the closest by default, my bad. Uh, we can use closest. We might get it to snap the way we want it to. All right. But sometimes, depending on where you start and you hit G and hold control, it will work. Sometimes it might not. Like, depends on, let's say we want this to snap to there for some reason. Uh, you can see that it doesn't work. Like, it doesn't let us do it. So we switch it to active. We make this the active element. You see that? And now we can snap it exactly where we need it. So vertex snapping, you can control in this manner as well. All right. So we can get everything going exactly the way we want it. A M merge by distance, whatever the case. And um, keep playing around with these settings, guys. There's a lot more that you can kind of discover on your own about them. It's kind of hard to talk about every given situation in a video, but... Could certainly do things like uh, create custom orientations as well. So maybe I want to use this orientation of this face here, this normal, as an orientation for everything else. You can click the little plus sign, create a custom one. Right? So now, wherever we go, we will still use that same kind of custom transform orientation. Right? Could be useful in some situations. And occasionally you'll find yourself um, using it, so. Might be something you need to do. Yes. All right. Might not be something you want to use, you know. All right, and so, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I mean, there's, there's a lot of little things that you can do in Blender you probably just never really thought about as a beginner. When it comes to controlling your mesh and selecting. This is Control-Shift-Clicking on quads. It works well. You can just do shortest path fill selections, basically, is what that's called, shortest path. 
It's the same as holding control, but it just clicks fill region for you. And uh, it's a control shift click do that. You do like insets, you can hit B. So like a normal inset, you hold control, you can push it down along normals, and then you hit B, get rid of those little caps on the ends, do things like that. So I can now maybe subdivide this, shade it smooth, all that fun stuff, right? If we want to rock, uh, like, let's say we'd have these subdivided up a little bit. Maybe I want to rock, like, every bird or something, right? On their own individual origins in their normals. So every third one could potentially do something like that. Now we got, like, a little zigzag, zigzag pattern going, kind of. Um, little things like that. They add up. And there we go. Maybe we're modeling like an oyster shell or something. We need that kind of weird shape to it, right? Or some kind of like scallop or something. Alt S. You can bring it in and out on normals. So select rings. Right here. Does that number? Kind of hard to see. Let's do it again on, down here. Okay. Select check or deselect every other one. And we're going to do select instead of rings, we're going to do loops. Okay. And it does that all the way through. So Alt S now. See how that works? If I do Alt S, oh, maybe if I do S, Shift Z, we can do something like that. Because we're using normals right now. All kinds of weird stuff. Um, let's do global active element. Okay, let's do 3D cursor actually. Let's do it over here. Shift right click. If I shift right click and drag. Shift right click and drag. Hold, hold down right click. You can actually position it like that as well. You can even hold control and snap it incrementally sometimes. So you uh, shift, right click, drag, and hold control. You can snap. Do that. Okay. And so maybe I do an S, shift Z from there. And push them all out like that. And uh, yeah, that's a weird mesh, but sure, that's the, the gist of this video. It's just about controlling your mesh for the most part, or controlling how you work with your mesh or your objects. These different little things up here are extremely useful. And combo those up with different selections. In edit mode, you get more stuff. In object mode, you get less, but it's kind of how Blender works. Okay. And so hope you enjoyed this video. I will check you guys out. The next one, all right. Take care.